Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash entitled people. In today's episode. When I was 16 I bought my first car, then my sister wanted it, and my mother was her usual self about it. Didn't let a customer go before me in line. Is it normal for people to knock repetitively when you're using a public restroom? Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. When I was 16 I bought my first car, then my sister wanted it, and my mother was her usual self about it. When I was a teenager I was originally saving to buy a scooter to have fun riding around town on. But on my 15th birthday my dad gave me an engine kit for my bicycle and convinced me to get a learner's permit and keep saving to buy a car instead. Even after moving in with my dad I continued doing odd jobs and earning money any way I could. But my dad asked his brother, my uncle, to teach me to drive because he worked as a driving instructor for a while in the 90s. We started lessons at a local community college where I drove around the parking lots and circled the campus. Then we went to country roads that few cars frequented. This repeated itself for a while till we finally decided to try cities and highways. We took it slow two days a week. And I slowly got pretty good at it. Right after my 16th birthday rolled around we went to the DMV to schedule a driving test. I passed on my first try thanks to all the practice I got beforehand. Not long after getting my license my dad decided it was time I worked part-time for him at his business after school. I was happy because it would make me double the money I was already saving from odd jobs. I started at what was referred to as the bottom rung. I was doing the cleaning around the office, filing paperwork, handing out mail to employees, and just doing any basic task that needed doing. Before I knew it I doubled my savings. While I had chosen to live with my father and my sister didn't, dad still had a room prepared for my sister when she came to visit. For the first few months or so sis didn't bother to come visit. But eventually dad convinced her to come over one day a week on Saturday. And dad always picked her up so I wouldn't have to see my mom. Thankfully she didn't really want to see me either. My sister by this point stopped asking me for money or trying to break into my room since I was living in my dad's house and not mom's. But she loved to game on the game systems we had at dad's house. There was PS2, GameCube, Spox, and Sis's personal favorite at the time, an Xbox 360. And dad also had a decent sized flat screen TV to play the games on on in his den. That was practically a luxury back then as those TVs were pretty expensive. Sis would pretty much spend all Saturday night playing games in the den and drinking coke. That's probably the main reason why she even wanted to come visit since she didn't have an Xbox 360 or flat screen TV at mom's house. Eventually after just over six months of working at my dad's business, he approached me with an offer to find a car I liked. He said if I found a good reliable used one that was the right price, he'd help me buy it and would put it on his insurance. I was ecstatic. So I started looking at local ads and found a silver 98 Toyota Camry with under 50.000 miles on it for sale. It was in great shape, save for the fact that the rear bumper had been dented and a few of windows were broken along with a badly cracked windshield because it was vandalized by some thug. The seller offered it to me at $3,500 with the damage. But my dad talked him down to $3,000 because of the money it had cost to get it fixed. bought the car and it went right to a local auto body mechanic my dad was friends with. He went to a junkyard and pulled parts of another Camry of the same model and used them to fix the Camry I'd bought. And when we went to pick up the car it looked almost brand new because he'd replaced the broken windows, pulled any dents there was, and touched up and shined the paint with a buffer. I was overjoyed and thanked him and my father profusely. I bought the car. But my dad paid for all the repairs. He never told me how much though. But that car was my main ride for the next 10 years if you can believe it. And I eventually sold it to a cousin on my dad's side for his first car. But that's not what you're here to read. When my sister first saw the car in dad's driveway she asked whose it was. Sis hey? 
Whose car is this? Is someone else visiting? Me nope. That's my car. Sis no way. Me yes way. I just bought it and dad helped me get it fixed. It runs like new. Then my sister just got really quiet and went back in the house to play more video games. She didn't really speak to me for the rest of the time she was visiting that week. I started driving the car to and from high school and I got a fair amount of attention for it. Many of my classmates were asking for rides and whatnot. But my ever being a stickler for the rules didn't give any rides because I legally wasn't supposed to for a few months since I was a teen driver. My sister however had complained to our mother after going back home about my new car. Somehow she couldn't process the fact that I'd gotten a car and she didn't, even though she is 3 years younger than me and was only 13 at the time. She started making a stink to our mom about how she wanted a car too. And mom called me on my cell phone to yell at me for starting this problem. I told her there was no problem. I bought a car with money I earned. And now I'm driving it. And if sis wants a car too, then she can either work hard and save up like I did, or hope she gets one as a gift. Mom just got mad at me and said it really wasn't fair. I pointed out that there really wasn't a fairness issue at all as sis wasn't even old enough to get a learner's permit yet, let alone a car. Mom just said I wasn't being supportive of my sister's feelings. And that when she is old enough to drive I should at least lend her the car when she needs it or give her driving lessons. I bluntly said that wasn't happening as I bought it with my own money, and it'd be put in my name when I turned 18. Plus she couldn't dictate what I do with the car because I didn't live with her anymore. And I had no idea what kind of good or bad driver she'd be in a few years. And with her habit of taking my stuff, I wouldn't let her anywhere near my car keys. Mom just angrily huffed, called me a jackass and hung up on me. I thought that was the end of it, but it wasn't. My sister started visiting less after that. She got mad at me one day just for washing my car outside. The following is paraphrased from what I remember. Sis, what are you doing? Me I'd say it's pretty obvious. But I'm washing my car. Sis yeah I get that you're doing that. But why bother to do it yourself? I mean you got money. You can just take it through a car wash. Me and where's the fun in that? At least I don't have to spend $10 to run it through a machine if I just take the time to wash it myself every so often. Sis you're just showing off because you have a car. Me showing off to who? You and I are the only ones here. Sis, rolls her eyes, oh come on. All my friends keep talking about you and your stupid car. It's not even a cool car. Just a shiny silver turd you think looks nice. And you won't even give me a ride in it yet. Me because I'm mandated by law not to have any passengers for several months. And it may be just a Camry, but I like it. And I really don't care what you think about that. My sister then, in a fit of anger, picked up some dirt off the ground and chucked it at the side of my car. But I just sprayed the spot with the hose and it looked like it was never there. So my sister just stomped back in the house and didn't talk to me again. After that she only came over for one more week again. When she came to visit she always had a big backpack with her because she'd bring clothes and other stuff in it. She didn't keep many things at dad's house. But the next morning when she left she was wearing the same clothes. Which was unusual because she never did that back then. She said she'd just die if she wore the same outfit two days in a row. I later found out the reason for this. When I next went into the den the PS2, GameCube and original Spox were destroyed. And the flat screen TV had part of its screen smashed. The Xbox 360 was also missing. I then realized she'd smuggled it out in her backpack. The other game systems she smashed and left what remained of them sitting on the TV stand. I checked the various games for the systems and sis had removed a bunch of the discs from their cases and stolen them as well. And she took all of the memory cards too. When I told dad he was pretty mad. 
He called my mom and she actually said that since I got the car, letting sis keep the Xbox 360 and the game she stole was the least he could do. Then she smugly said that sis didn't want to come visit anymore. Dad angrily told her she better stop sounding so happy about it or he was gonna make her pay for all the damages. Mom just snorted and finally allowed him to talk to my sister. My, my dad was pretty heartbroken sis had done all that. He'd been trying so hard to get her to appreciate him more. But sis admitted over the phone that she hated him for divorcing mom. And her taking the Xbox 360 and destroying the TV and other game systems was as our mother called it, compensation for her pain. Dad could have called his lawyer to sue for more custody rights. But he believed that if she didn't want to be there, he wouldn't force her. From then on over the next decade I barely saw either my sister or mother. Dad didn't bother to try and get the Xbox 360 back. He said that it and the other stuff sis broke were just things that could be replaced and bought new ones. But I could tell he was really hurt by what mom and sis had done. He actually left my sister's room pretty much untouched for the next few years. But she never came back to use it. From the way my sister is now though, you'd never guess she was the same person. She's extremely ashamed of her actions back then and wishes she could take it all back and apologize to dad. But can't since he passed away some time ago. We visited his grave recently and she cried over it. I'm really not sure how to end this story. I don't even have a moral quip or something to say. Man your sis and mom were straight assholes and GL. Yeah they completely were. And I've got no shortage of stories on how they treated me during my teenage years. To be honest, it sounds like sister was a typical 13-year-old sister with no perspective of a difficult situation. Mom probably played that to her advantage. Opie, I'm glad to read that you and your sister have repaired your relationship and she has grown up. Hey, it has been a while. Gosh, your mother really sucks. Yeah she does. Thankfully I got some payback before moving out of her house. Did you see the revenge stories I posted? Didn't expect that bit of character development at the end there lol. I'm sorry about your dad Opie and hopefully you can have a decent relationship with your sister now. We are working hard at building trust now that our mother is out of our lives. Since our past is filled with so much grief, we're trying to start fresh as siblings and get along as adults. I visit here and there, and we've gone out to eat together a few times. My guess is your mom filled your sister with lies to turn her into a weapon against him. It's very common in divorces. What I can understand from this is that your sister was a teenager acting out, normal, but was being enabled by your mother. I'm sorry for your loss and for your sisters. She learned some valuable lessons, but at a very high price. There are not many things more painful than remorse over hurts you inflicted on loved ones, especially when you can no longer say, I'm sorry. But for what it's worth, everyone, didn't let a customer go before me in line. It's just happened and honestly ick if that makes me a jerk. I went to a supermarket to buy some groceries and joined a line. All lines had many people, which is understandable, it's evening. Anyway, as it was my turn to scan and pay, one man, who by the look of him was drunk and smelled bad, tried to go in front of me saying, I only have one item, let me through. And well, I didn't. He started saying how disrespectful I am, how young people should be nicer to older people etc. He tried to tell the cashier on me, but she let me go first and he went after me. As I was packing my bag, he looked at me and smugly said haha, I still finished first. And then when we were walking out of the store he said you can't live in this city with this attitude, ironic, considering that half of the city is rude if not more. Ig, does that make me rude or was he being entitled? I waited in the line like everyone else today and even when I, too, had one item. He didn't ask, he demanded. You're good. That jerk didn't only try to get in front of you, he got in front of everyone else in the line. 
A man behind me apparently let him go in front of him, I don't know about the others. Anyways, thank you for your time. He had one item. You had one item. You were ahead of him in line. He did not ask politely. He was drunk, smelly, and verbally abusive. To me, this is not rocket science. You are not a jerk. He is. I just am relieved he wasn't waiting for you outside. Many times I have had one or two items and have never even asked to cut in line. Nor have I ever been offered to cut in line. I can't even count the number of times I have offered people to go ahead of me. A few declined but I insisted and they finally went ahead. Age, gender, race or disability doesn't give anyone a free pass to demand cutting in line. I will never understand anyone who demands to cut in line. My parents always taught me that if you want anything in life, you ask nicely. Life doesn't owe you anything. I hate that I'm older. Young people have no respect attitude. Respect isn't given. It's earned. Despite being oddly snuggly, the old man was still a raging A.H. Is it normal for people to knock repetitively when you're using a public restroom? Yes. Yesterday, I was at a coffee shop here in Southern Cali and just entered the singular women's restroom. Doing my business in peace when I heard a knock. If it were me, and I feel like how most people are, you would try the handle first and if it's locked, it just means it's occupied and you'll wait in peace until they're done. After about a couple of minutes, the person knocked again, this time longer, so at this point I was rushing to wash my hands. Turns out it's a mom with a baby in a stroller and I'm just like. Whatever emergency your baby has, I was having, too. Why would you keep on knocking? Is that a normal thing people do? If I'm in a public restroom and someone knocks, I shout occupied so they know there really is somebody in there. If the next knock wasn't for a couple of minutes, you really have nothing to be upset about. I ask yes, cause, you know, they might be selling Avon or something. Maybe it was a different person the second time? You said was a couple of minutes. Please knock, don't try the handle first. A lot of doors have faulty locks. People who just try the handle first are rude. Knock and wait for a reply. I hate when people try the handle instead of knocking. I find it rude and startling. I've never tried the handle first who was out there doing that. I'm not trying to walk in on some poor soul who might have had to pee so bad they forgot to lock the door, plus some bathroom locks don't actually work. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.